the first element in the periodic table is hydrogen. And you all know this perfectly well without me telling you. But what if I ask you which element or what in general should be placed in the periodic table before hydrogen? When you try to answer this question, real confusion begins. Let's try using scientific knowledge and relying on existing competent approaches to sort out this question and find some clues to this problem. Is it true that in the original version of Mendeleev's table there was an element that represented ether? Is it true that coronium and neutonium were also there? And why did the reptilians erase this from Mendeleev's table and thus mislead everyone? Was it really to hide the existence of ether from people? Let's examine the issue in detail. I'm sure it will be interesting. It will be useful. And of course, I immediately ask you to support the video with likes. And of course, I immediately ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Now let's move on to the topic and try to figure things out based on existing scientific knowledge. What kind of elements should the one before hydrogen be? And when we try to answer this question, we find out that this element is nothing. Yes. And what is nothing? And nothing is, huh? Well, maybe dark matter, but we'll get to that a bit later, or some kind of non-existence. So, based on the current concept, we should rephrase the question like this. Can non-existence be present in the periodic table? Here, we're already turning more towards philosophy, but definitely not towards scientific or physical knowledge. And when we answer this question thoroughly, all the points, all the complexities come to the surface and we can work through them. The next question we need to ask is, what exactly does the periodic table describe? Why do we need such a periodic table and what is entered into its cells? And here, we must state with complete confidence that what is entered into the cells of the periodic table is the atom, its structure. We know that the order number in the periodic table corresponds to the number of protons, which is also the charge of the atomic nucleus. Uh, and this should once again prompt us to think that just to the left, in theory, we should already be searching for something with much more difficulty and caution. According to these ideas and according to the classical concepts of modern science, the atomic nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. We can add these protons. Uh, and yes, that's exactly the question you should be asking yourself. But can we remove protons? To answer this question, we need to analyze, in fact, what is located between the elements in the periodic table. But according to the modern paradigm, there is nothing between the elements, between the cells in the periodic table. Why is that? Because we just discussed that the number in the periodic table corresponds to the number of protons inside the atomic nucleus. If that's really the case, then we simply can't assign a fractional number. That would mean there should be some element between hydrogen and helium with one and a half protons. And there you have the answer as to why there shouldn't be any additional elements between the cells and why we can't have a fractional atomic number. This once again means that the periodic table can only grow to the right. And now, using this knowledge, knowing that the table can only grow in that direction and that nothing can appear between the cells of the periodic table since a fractional nuclear charge is not allowed, we can assume that it's possible to go before the periodic table, before hydrogen. But what is there to look for? Well, in a good sense, the only thing that should be there is precisely a fractional element. And this is already one of the first factors indicating that there is no element to the left of hydrogen. This is exactly the factor that suggests that nothing lighter than hydrogen should exist in the periodic table. So where did all this fuss start from? Where did these ideas come from that there should be something before hydrogen? They are, in principle, logical and justified. Why are they logical? Well, imagine that we have a kind of atlas of elements and that this atlas contains everything necessary for the existence of matter as we know it, or better yet, materials as we know them. And in this periodic table, there should, in theory, be some building blocks. What purely theoretically should exist before hydrogen? Before hydrogen, there should be some elements from which this matter is assembled. But if we stick to a strictly scientific approach, if we exclude the presence of atomic nuclei, then technically there should be some element with zero protons inside the atomic nucleus. Just think about that. What is it? And technically, it's either a nucleus made up only of neutrons or some strange thing consisting solely of an electron that's somewhere out there. It's probably some kind of virtual nucleus. It's probably some kind of virtual particle. Well, in the case of neutrons, such a scenario is in principle possible, but only under certain conditions. Let me remind you that the periodic table regulates those conditions, those phenomena that exist, let's say, under certain ordinary, familiar circumstances. And if we're talking about matter made of neutrons, if we're talking about some kind of atomic nucleus consisting of neutrons, then here we're moving into the realm of neutron stars. So it turns out that to the left of hydrogen, according to the classical scientific paradigm, there's nothing to look for. 
we would have to look for neutron matter there, which by definition cannot exist there since the periodic table simply doesn't describe such things. Or else there's some kind of strange thing there, made up only of electrons. I think there's even a name for this kind of matter, something like electronium or something equally incredible. Many people stubbornly try to place such strange entities as antimatter or dark matter before hydrogen. Dark matter is, in general, something completely incomprehensible. And this completely incomprehensible thing does not conform to any of the ideas we have about anything at all. Where does our knowledge of dark matter come from? It's funny, but there is practically none of it. Our knowledge of dark matter is based on the behavior of cosmic objects, celestial bodies, in a certain way. This kind of behavior can only happen in one case. If there are some points of gravity, points of attraction or repulsion in this system that are invisible to the observer, and if they are invisible to the observer, well, what's the simplest explanation? Of course, the simplest thing is to say that it's dark matter, which cannot be detected or identified, but it participates in gravitational interactions. And the next candidate for the role of the matter that could be in the house of the people is antimatter. And what is antimatter? Antimatter is matter that is completely opposite in charge to the matter that exists. Unlike dark matter, we have already discovered antimatter. And a wide variety of interesting experiments have even been conducted with antimatter. And technically, it should have made it into the periodic table because, as we said, the atomic number represents the charge of the nucleus. If the charge of the nucleus goes negative, then, in theory, well, hello, there's plenty of room before hydrogen, as much as you want, a whole lot. But the thing is, antimatter doesn't fit the classification of the periodic table. We've basically already discussed the fundamental ideas that are important to us right now. And one of the fundamental ideas is that the periodic table contains chemical elements specifically. In other words, the very search for some kind of original primordial matter contradicts the logic of the periodic table, because the periodic table is an atlas of chemical elements. And chemical elements are a certain form of matter that has formed under suitable conditions and which possesses certain parameters related to the stability of this matter, as well as parameters of this matter, and so on and so forth. And of course, if you're interested in popular science, then you've definitely read that the periodic table started with ether, that evil Freemasons, reptilians came and removed ether from Mendeleev's table. Maybe ether exists in some form, but it's definitely not the kind that fans of the luminiferous ether were looking for. And that's exactly why all the fuss around this leftmost cell is really about searching for dragons in the mountains. And most likely, you're more likely to find dragons than to encounter ether.